Dad? What the heck? Oh no! Yeah, it's me. I got a problem. Meet me at the usual spot. Okay, bye. So what's the emergency? I need you to get rid of these. You know I don't deal with this stuff, man. You owe me. This time. Hey, Dad, what are you doing? I got a bunch of straws on the counter here, and I don't know where they went. Dad, you are not supposed to have them anymore. What are you talking about? They're illegal now. Don't you remember? Dude, that's only in California. We don't live in California. We can have straws. Wait, what? Hello YouTubers, I'm John Can. For today's project, we're going to build a small electric car, mostly from garbage or things that could be recycled. This would be a great project to do with the kids. Uh, it would be great for like a science fair or anything along those lines. We're going to start off this project by cutting circles from cardboard. We're using thin cardboard from a cereal box and thicker cardboard just from like a cardboard box or something. So you're going to start off with the thin cardboard and you're going to cut out six circles that are about an inch and a quarter in diameter. You're going to cut out two more that are two and a half inches and then two more that are three and a quarter inches. Then with the thicker cardboard, you're going to cut three circles that are two and a half inches in diameter and eight circles that are three inches in diameter. Once you've got all these little circles cut out of the cardboard, you're going to use a pencil to poke a hole in the center of them. Uh, that's going to give you somewhere to put them on the straws that we're going to use for the axles and drive shafts uh, during various stages of this project. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, we're ready to start wrapping copper wire for the electric motor that we're going to build. This motor is going to be what drives the car. We want to wrap as much copper wire as we can uh, to make this motor as powerful as possible. The wire that I'm using came out of an old starter solenoid for a Ford pickup truck. Be sure to leave yourself about 18 inches of wire after you're done wrapping this up for the field quail. You're going to use that extra wire uh, in a fashion to wrap around the field quail to keep all the wires in place. That way you don't wind up with them sticking out at odd angles or getting jumbled up. You really want this field quail to be as tight as you can. So as you can see, I'm just wrapping that wire around on itself. Uh, to make sure that it is nice and tight. We're going to take the two wire ends and just kind of twist them together to lock everything in place. We'll wind up using these wires uh, to power the field coil. So we want to make sure that you've got about four inches sticking out. That way we have plenty to work with. Now we're ready to mount the field coil to the straw that we're going to use for a drive shaft. Uh, you want to put the straw through the center of the field coil. That'll help with the balance. You want to try to get this thing as well balanced as you can. Uh, it spins pretty fast, and if it's off balance, it'll shake a bunch, and you don't want that. And we're just going to use the hot glue gun to glue the field coil to the straw that we're going to use for the primary shaft. Now we're ready to build a commutator of our electric motor. You'll notice that when I glued the field coil to the straw that we're going to use for the primary shaft, I actually lined it up to where the field coil runs parallel with the lines on the straw. And now we're going to take the wires that we left out, and we're going to put them on the straw in a similar fashion to where they run along the lines. This will be important for the timing of our electric motor to make sure that as it rotates, it hits the brushes in a fashion that activates the magnet to move the motor instead of stalling it out. All we really did here was use some electrical tape to tape the wires down and then trim the excess off. The next step in building our motor is to install a couple of the thin, small circles that we cut out earlier. Uh, we're going to use these as thrust washers to keep the motor in place and for the sides of our first drive pulley. As normal, I'm using the hot glue gun to secure these things to the drive shaft. Uh, the two outside pieces of cardboard need to be set up in a fashion to where they're just a little bit narrower than the cardboard box we're using for the chassis of the car. The third piece of cardboard will need to be glued on in a fashion to give you about an inch of distance between it and the outside thrust washer. This is what's going to act as the drive pulley. Great, now we're ready to start building the brushes for our electric motor. We're going to start by taking a little bit of this thin wire and stripping off the insulation. You don't need to use a very heavy gauge wire, and you want to strip off about an inch of the insulation from each end. Now you need to take a pair of paper clips and straighten them out all the way. These are going to actually act as the brushes that ride on the commutator of the motor. All that we're looking to do here is make a connection between the wire and the paper clip. So all we need to do is wrap the wire around the paper clip a couple times, fold the paper clip over, and then tape it down so it can't come loose. Perfect. 
Now, as I mentioned before, you want this electric motor to be pretty well balanced. It's pretty hard to get it exactly right. Uh, I wound up using a couple of copper washers to help balance this motor. We just glued them onto the side of the field coil that was too light. You want to use copper instead of steel because steel will mess up your magnetic field. At this point, we're ready to start getting our electric motor armature set into our cardboard car chassis. You want the armature of the motor to sit down in the chassis as close to the permanent magnet you're going to use as possible. I accomplish this by cutting V's in the side of the cardboard chassis. So what I'm doing right here is scraping the insulation off of our copper wire that we used for the field coil. I'm just using a razor knife to get this done. Uh, this way we get a good contact between our commutator and our brushes. We found that the straws didn't spin very well if they were just out on the cardboard. So what we wound up doing is cutting a couple pieces of a bigger straw to use as a bushing. These bushing straws only need to be about a half inch long. Here we're installing the rubber band that we'll be using for our first drive belt. And then we're just going to glue those bushing straws to the cardboard car chassis. Keep in mind that you want everything to have a little bit of play so it'll spin freely. Excellent, now it's time to install the brushes. This is not an exact science, we're basically just going to poke the brushes through the cardboard box close to the commutator. Just want to give the paper clips a couple of quick bends. Uh, we're going to wind up bending them in a fashion to where they will sit flush against the front of the cardboard chassis and then just using the hot glue gun to glue them in place. So the idea here is that you want the brushes to touch the commutator pretty firmly. Uh, they should kind of be spring-loaded and move up and down with the commutator as it moves, but you also want to make sure that they are not touching each other. At this point, we're ready to power up our motor. I'm going to use two 9-volt batteries that I'm going to wire in series to provide us with 18 volts of total power for this. Uh, I wind up taping the batteries together uh, just to kind of keep them in a nice convenient package. I took a small piece of paper clip and taped it between the positive terminal of one battery and the negative on the other to get the batteries wired in series. We've got the majority of our motor built and it's a good time to test it out and make sure that it works properly. I'm going to put the magnet that I'm using on a piece of cardboard to shim it just a little bit closer to the field coil. Then I just need to hook the battery up to our brush leads and give the motor a slight spin and away it goes. Now that we know that the motor works, it's a good time to do a little bit of fine tuning with the magnet. You want to slide your magnet around a little bit underneath your motor and you'll hear the motor spin faster or go slower. You want to find a spot where the motor seems to turn about as fast as it can and then go ahead and tape the magnet down to the cardboard chassis. At this point I'm going to go ahead and clip one of the brush leads in half. We're going to wind up using this uh, break in the wire as kind of an on off switch, you'll see that later on in the video. We're going to work on installing the battery pack into the chassis of the car at this point. I just poked a couple holes in the side of the cardboard where we can run the wires to the brushes through the chassis of the car and put the battery pack on the inside of the vehicle. So what I'm doing here is I'm taping the stripped ends of our brush lead wires to the battery pack itself. Then I'm going to go ahead and tape the battery down into the chassis just like we did with the permanent magnet. Here I'm just stripping the ends of the wire that we cut earlier. Uh, this is what's going to act as a primitive on off switch for our electric motor. So we just twist the ends of the wire together and we want the motor to run and take them apart when we're done. Our electric motor is all put together and we are ready to start working on the secondary shaft. This shaft is going to work as kind of a transmission and provide a lot of the gear reduction uh, to drive the car. I'm starting off by building a large pulley on this shaft. What we're going to do is use the three small pieces of thick cardboard, the two large pieces of thin cardboard, and then two more of the small pieces of cardboard that we cut out earlier. We're going to make a couple of pulleys on this shaft. Uh, the one big one and then a smaller one kind of like we did on the electric motor. Then we're going to take one more of the small pieces of cardboard and glue it on the shaft in a fashion to where it works as a thrust washer to keep this uh, intermediate shaft from moving around too much. So here I'm taking a smaller wider rubber band and putting it on the pulley and this is just meant to provide grip for the belt. Okay now you can take the drive belt from the electric motor and put it on the large pulley on the intermediate shaft. And you can use this to uh, judge the distance that you need to put the intermediate shaft back in the chassis. I wound up just cutting a small V in the chassis again and then using a couple of pieces of the bigger straw once again for bushings and gluing that all down in there. Kind of like we did for the electric motor. You can see that I cut all of the drive shaft straws down. Uh, this was so that I could easily take them in and out of the chassis if I needed to without having to take it all apart. Great, now that we've got our intermediate shaft in place and the secondary belt in, we're ready to figure out where we want to cut a hole in our chassis uh, to run the belt through so that we can drive the rear axle. 
So when you cut your hole in the bottom of the chassis for your drive belt to go through, you want to save that piece of cardboard. We're going to cut it into four small pieces and we're going to use those later on in the project. For the axle pulley, I went up using a couple of large lids off of some juice bottles. These worked really well uh, for this stage in the project. Now you want to kind of assemble the pulley on the shafts without gluing it in place to start. That way you can adjust it to fit where the hole is in the chassis and make sure you have enough room to put wheels on your axle. Once you have that all situated, you just want to glue the two lids in place uh, between the two thin circles of cardboard that you have left. Now we're just going to install the secondary belt on our rear axle pulley. Now this is where the little pieces of cardboard that we cut out earlier come in handy. Uh, we want to use them as spacer blocks between the axle and the chassis of the car to give it a little bit of room. That way the axle doesn't rub on the chassis. Once again, we're going to use a couple pieces of the larger straw for bushings on this rear axle. Uh, we're just going to glue all this in place with a hot glue gun. When you're installing these belt driven shafts in the chassis, you want to make sure that there's just a slight amount of tension on the belts. Uh, just enough to deflect the straw seems to work pretty well. So I was about two thirds of the way through this project when I figured out a set of egg cartons would work really well for jack stands on this build. At this point we're ready to build the wheels for our car. These are going to be made from the eight thick uh, cardboard circles that we cut out earlier. We end up using two pieces of cardboard for each wheel and just gluing them together with a hot glue gun. What I'm doing here is assembling the front axle. I went ahead and built this axle, uh, glued the wheels onto it and put the uh, large straw bushings on it before I even set it into the chassis. Okay, so here I'm gluing the rear wheels onto the rear axle. And I'll be honest with you, I messed up at this point. I glued the wheels on too far out on the straw. Uh, this let the straw flex and made it to where the axle didn't want to move in the chassis. I wound up uh, remounting the wheels quite a bit closer to the chassis and that did fix the problem. I've got the front spacer blocks glued onto the chassis. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue the axle onto the chassis as well. Uh, you want to make sure that you get this axle fairly straight with the chassis. That way your car doesn't dog leg when it goes down the road or go in circles, drive crooked or anything like that. At this point the car was pretty much all put together and I went to test it out and found my second issue with my build. Um, the straws that I used for the drive shafts didn't have enough grip to pull the belts. So I wound up taking the hot glue gun and building up a layer of hot glue on the straws between the pulleys and that did the job. The glue was a little bit sticky and it made the belts go. The last thing I wound up doing was installing a couple of these small wide rubber bands on the wheels. This kind of added a tread and helped them roll easier. Sweet, our car is done. All we have to do now is twist the wire ends together to complete our circuit, give the electric motor a little bit of a spin to get it started, and away the car goes. This project took me about seven hours to build over the course of two evenings. It was a great opportunity for me and my son to talk about magnetism, electricity, and do a little math involving the gear ratios and the way that the, uh, the different pulley sizes work. The car isn't particularly fast and the batteries don't last very long, but it is very neat to see something that you made from garbage uh, move under its own power. A huge shout out to Paul for helping with the intro on this video. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please take a second to subscribe. I'm John Can, and remember, if I can build it, so can you.